everyone. I'm Glenda with SureFit Designs, whimsically referred to as Glenda the Good Stitch, and I know that lots of you already know that name. But I would like to say a big welcome to all of our existing customers, as well as all of you who are new, and I know there are some new folks with us today. So a big warm welcome to all of you. Today's chat is called The Heart of the Dart. The Dart has a lot of controversy around it, and I received a question from one of my customers. Uh, she was very full busted. She was having difficulty truing the side seam of the dart. And I just thought, you know, that would make an excellent topic for one of our live chats. So here we are, the heart of the dart. The whole purpose of these chats is to provide you with inspiration. That's kind of the main theme of our 2021 this year. And that's why we have been doing these live chats. I do encourage you to send your questions to me if you have topics that you think would be good for chats, like what happened for today's chat. And um, where you're going to send your, your chat suggestions is to info at surefitdesigns.com. All emails info at surefitdesigns.com come to me. I definitely read them and I have a short list they go into the short list, I evaluate, and then I build my chats around your actual requests. I figure if one person has asked the question, there's a lot more people out there that likely have a similar issue and would appreciate the information. So this one is the heart of the dart. Now, we all know that in these chats, you have a chat window, and there's two things that can happen. Number one, your comments. And number two, your questions. When you have a question, I want you to put the capital letter Q in front of the question so that I know it's a question rather than a comment. Now, I actually have a question for you, and I'm going to be looking for your answers here in a moment. And this is the question. What is the purpose of a dart? I did ask that in a previous chat, but I'm going to ask it again today because I do know some of you are new here. So what is the purpose of a dart? Now I'm going to give you a few moments here to answer. And as I do, I'm just going to be saying that normally we have our distributors with us. And I think I've seen pretty much all of them sign on. Martha in Australia, it's what, three o'clock in the morning there. And she said she was going to make it to the chat. So hopefully she is. And we definitely appreciate her joining us. But I've seen Elsa B and Anna. Uh, Elsa B is in South Africa. Anna's in Canada. And uh, Jude, Judith from the UK usually joins us as well. And I haven't seen her sign on, but it doesn't mean that I haven't seen everybody. So um, thank you so much. And then we also have my office assistant, Kelly, who is in another office, and she's helping to answer questions as well. So what do we say? Oh, my goodness, we've got a lot of comments coming in about what is the uh, purpose of a dart uh, to create depth for a garment. I, gosh, I don't know if I can scroll through these fast enough with all of you. To create a 3D shape, um, to sew excess fabric, to shape the body. A dart gives better fit to help mold the fabric around the body smoothly, to help a flat piece of fabric curve to our body. Excellent answers, everybody. That's really, really good. And those are all perfectly legitimate answers for what is the purpose of a dart. Okay, I'm going to have some more questions for you too, so just be ready. One of the things that um, I asked for you to do, if you wanted to participate in this chat today, is I asked you to download and print out the half scale um, bodice front, because towards the end of the lesson, I'm going to be showing you how to move the dart, how to perfect the dart, and we're all going to have some fun doing this together. If you didn't have an opportunity to download that half scale bodice, in the show more notes directly underneath this video, I think the first link that I gave there was the link to get that little half scale bodice. And so you will want to do that. You're also going to need a ruler or line drafter, a pencil, some paper scissors, some removable tape, and um, 
I think that's about everything. I might have missed one or two items, but you'll likely have those on hand anyway. Okay, so um, just remember that when you're asking your questions, you put a large capital letter Q in the front of your question so that I know what it is. And if you're putting your questions in now, I likely won't see them. So when we get to the end, when I actually answer the questions, make sure you re-enter the questions so that I can answer it for you. But some of our distributors can also be answering questions as we go along here. All righty. Um, you know that I usually announce what's new at the beginning of our chats. And so we've got two what's new to announce today. Number one is the Academy name has changed. And some of you who are new are going, okay, so what's the Academy? Well, the used to be SoFitAcademyOnline.com, which was a long and cumbersome web address, has now been changed to SureFit Academy. And you might ask, why did I do that? Well, the reason is because the initial name was very long, very cumbersome, and goodness only knows why I named it that in the first place, because everybody usually calls our academy the academy, or they call it SureFit Academy. So about a week ago, I changed the URL, the URL being the web address. And for all of you who have all your courses and everything there, and in fact, the courses what I'm talking about are your DVD courses, Whenever you purchase a regular DVD from us, you always get the 100% discount code to go and watch it in the streaming format in the Academy. And so I just thought, you know, it's time to change the name. But all of your bookmarks should still all work because I saved the other old URL and um, it, everything still points. But you will see in the address window now, it'll say, SureFit Academy. So that's a what's new number one. A what's new number two is that our distributor in South Africa, Elsa B. Hearn, is now doing uh, SureFit Designs, Design and Sew Alongs. She started off doing that last year, and a lot of you participated in her jean jacket class. I did too. It was really fun making that jean jacket. Well, Elsa B. has just announced she is doing a new design and sew along that's going to start next Friday, and she's called it The Look of Jeans and the Comfort of Yoga Pants. So she's taking a stretch denim and is making them as a pull-on pant and doing a very, very unique waist treatment on them. She's going to show you how to do an exposed zipper, a very wide elastic so you can pull these pants up over your hip and zip the zipper closed. And um, it's going to be a really, really fun class. I think it was just yesterday she announced to her mailing list that the um, sew along was starting and I told her that I would announce it today. So where you can go to find out more information about uh, Elsa B's Jean slash yoga class is to um, her website, which is surefitdesigns.co.za. And then when you go over to her shop tab, when it drops down, you're going to see a little um, side menu and it will have in it her online classes. And so this one is the first one there. And she did a four minute video that she's put up on her YouTube channel that tells you all about the details that she's gonna cover in this class. And you have to remember, you know, even though she's in South Africa, we are a worldwide economy. Anybody from anywhere in the world can participate in this design and sew along. And I'm sure you're gonna learn a lot. In fact, it's interesting. Yesterday, I just got a phone call from a, a customer asking me to discuss with her the pros and cons of using a stretch woven fabric like stretch denim or stretch uh, chino or bottom weight fabric and what effect it has on our blueprints. Well, that's a, the exact thing 
that Elsa B is going to be talking about. So it was a very timely phone call, and it's very timely that Elsa B is actually offering this new design and so along. So those were our two what's new. Um, okay, now, we also, every month, we pick a sew and tell winner. And the, um, this winner this month is uh, Anne Randall Roos. And I'm likely saying her last name incorrectly. It's spelled R-O-O-S, and she is from South Africa. And Anne has won one of our skirt design and sew-alongs. And so, Anne, um, thank you for participating in Sew and Tell. And again, for all of you new people who don't know what Sew and Tell is, it's an opportunity to sew with your Surefoot Designs patterns and then tell the world about it. And we tell the world about it in our Facebook group. And so you just need to take a picture of yourself in the garment, say what garment, what pattern you used, what little processes that you used, and then randomly we pick a winner once a month. We're not picking winners based on the design that you decided to sew or on your construction because obviously I can't see how you've sewn it together. We are simply rewarding you for your participation in our Sew and Tell program. And so when you do that, you're gonna put your photographs in our Facebook group, our private group, and put on the hashtags Sew and Tell and Me Made. And that way, when Kelly goes once a month to pick the renter, she can just randomly, or she can sort by those um, hashtags and then randomly choose who our next month's winner is going to be. So congratulations to you, Anne, and thank you so much for participating, and I hope to see a lot more of you sewing with your Surefoot Designs projects. Okay, um, before I talk about the um, promotion that we're going to have this particular month, because you all know we usually do some kind of a sale or promotion every month, I have another question that I'm going to ask you and some of you are going to know the answers, and some of you won't have a clue what this means. What do the letters FBA stand for? That's Frank Boy Apple. What do they stand for? Well, while you're writing your answers in our chat window, I am going to be letting you know the promotion and event that we have on for the month of June and it is our DVD sale. Usually once, the, once a year, we put our DVDs on special, and in the United States, I'm offering 15% off, and all of the distributors are participating. We are all using the same discount code. It is DVD sale, all right, DVD sale. So you choose what DVD you want, put it in your shopping cart, and then before you click the pay button, make sure you put in the discount code DVD sale. Some of the percentages of discount change depending on the distributor, but everybody is using the same discount code. The uh, code is good until tomorrow night, Sunday night at midnight, okay? So what are the DVDs that we have? I'm going to run over them uh, quickly so that you're familiar with them. We have so many DVD tutorials that a lot of people aren't aware of them. In fact, I was just talking with a new customer early this morning who was confused and did not know of all the volume of DVDs that we have. So the first one that I'll mention is the jeans design, uh, excuse me, it's jeans behind the scenes. And what I do here is I show you how to take your pant blueprint and convert it into jeans. And we talk about the zipper, the pocket, the uh, coin pocket, lots of good information on there. Another DVD that a lot of people really love is called Fitting Commercial Patterns. I can't begin to tell you how many times I get emails of customers saying, Glenda, is there any way to help fit all of the commercial patterns I have in my closet with my, my body blueprint? And the answer is yes, it's covered in this DVD. So I'm going to show you three different dress examples, two different pants examples, 
and one different shirt example in this, uh, in this particular DVD. Then we also have our how-to DVD. Now, any of you who have purchased our kit combos, you always will be getting a how-to DVD with it. One case, but two DVDs. On one side is the dress, how to draw off the dress pattern, and on the other side is how to draw off the pants, the shirt, and the children's pattern. Then, in addition to the how-to DVD, we also have three intensive fitting courses. The first one I'll mention is the pants fitting course. Again, one case, two DVDs in there, lots of information, well over three hours. We also have a bodice fitting course, uh, specialized DVD. One case, two DVDs, again over three hours of information. And then we have a shirt fitting course. Now, again, one case, two DVDs. So why do I have these intensive DVDs when we have the how-to? Well, the intensive DVDs give you more in-depth information. I give you some little insider tips and information. I show you how to um, sew the pattern together. I put the pattern on a model. We talk about fit. I evaluate the fit. And then, uh, what do I do next? Then I show you the fitting refinements and talk about designing. So you can see that there is so much more information that's, than that is what is included in the how-to DVD, and that's why we did them. I also should mention that with the Pant Fitting Course DVD, there is an included 30-minute Skype session with me. So whether we use Skype or Teams or WhatsApp or FaceTime, you get 30 minutes with me. So um, all the courses are very, very valuable, and I hope that you'll consider them. Another course that is really appropriate for the beginner and intermediate seamstresses are, is, <laughs> whatever the verb is, our DVD series called Make It So. There's two cases here and four DVDs, 28 lessons to help you get your garment sewn together. This is 60 years worth of my knowledge and information packed into 28 lessons, <clears throat> excuse me, of how I do things. I know the way I sew garments together isn't the only way that there is out there to do them. It's one way and it's worked for me for an awful long time. So there's something for everybody to learn in our Make It Sew DVD series. And then the last DVD I wanted to talk about kind of leads us into the lesson today, and it's called Darts, Versatile and Amazing. And darts really are versatile and amazing. And there's four different darts here, and they show you how to take the dart and move it into some very, very unique positions. We'll talk about those as I go on today. And then we also are including our three designing books in our DVD promotion today, and the reason is that at the back of the designing book, we have a how-to DVD. And this how-to DVD shows you how to draw all the patterns that are included in the designing book. So the first one is the um, Beyond Bodice Basics. That's the designing book that goes with the dress kit. We also have So Sensational Shirts the designing book that goes with the shirt kit, and then we have Pants That Mix and Multiply that goes with the pant kit, of course, and all of them have their own unique DVD included. Okay, again, remember that you need to enter the code DVD sale um, at checkout, and all you need to do is go to any of the distributor's websites, go to shop, and then scroll down to DVD tutorials and you'll find these items there. And the sale is good till midnight on Monday night. Okay, as we now jump into the lesson, I'm now going to see what your answers were for what FBA means. Okay, we've got full bust adjustment, full bust adjustment, 
Um, full bust adjustment, good for you. Any of you folks who wrote in there full bust adjustment, that is exactly correct, and that's what FBA stands for. Now, anybody who's small busted doesn't need that, and so that's why you wouldn't have known the answer. So don't feel bad about knowing the answer if you didn't know it. Now, the lady who wrote in about her very, very full bust and how to true and perfect the side seam kind of, again, is what guided the whole um, organization of this particular uh, chat. So now let's move to the wall and talk about that bus start. Again, I'll just say this very quickly and briefly. For those of you who are brand new to SureFit Designs, the tools that I'm going to be talking about, the pattern, the adjust a bus template, these two, uh, patterns and tools are all found in our kit called the dress kit. And I use that word dress very loosely and liberally because you can make blouses and jackets and skirts and coats and one piece and two piece dresses. Okay, so let's now focus on this dart here. Inside the kit, we do have a template to help you put in the correct bra cup size. And I, I do have to chuckle when I'm reading the posts that come into our Facebook group and they say, oh, you're a double D cup bra size, you need to do an FBA. And I look at that post and I'll answer, no, you don't have to do an FBA. All you need to do is use the correct bra cup size that's given to you on this template. Because this template has on it an A, B, C, D, double D, and E cup shape. Now, again, for those of you who don't know what happens with an FBA, because you're not full busted, well, you have to slash your pattern vertically. You have to slash your pattern horizontally. And then this piece down here you have to take and shift down and out to create more length in the pattern and width in the pattern to accommodate your full bust. But not with SureFit Designs, and the reason is that we measure the full bust to establish your bust circumference, and that's the actual measurement dot that we use when we're drawing off the pattern. And then, if you have like a double D dart, you just come in and place the double D dot over top of the bust grading series of dots, and then draw in your respective shape. But, what about those ladies who are beyond an E? Well, there is an article in the Learning Center, which is one of our other websites called sfdlearningcenter.com. In the article library, we have an article called Beyond E. And when you go into that article and download it, it is a PDF document, there's a two-page article that you're going to print out and it's called Enlarging the Adjust a Bus Template. And there's a diagram on the front of this that uh, shows you what your template should end up looking like. And so I'm just going to put up this enlarged template right here. And we actually have a graphic that's going to come up and show you um, on screen what this is looking like. So here's my original uh, Adjust a Bus template. And then you can see what I've done here is I've extended it out using an additional piece of mylar. Or if you don't have any clear mylar, because you kind of likely have to go to a store and buy it, but you know, someplace like Hobby Lobby would likely have something like this. You could also use just a piece of your tracing vellum, but you can't use cardboard. You have to be able to see through it. Tracing vellum, I don't like using for this extension because it's too floppy. So that's why I like this plastic. But be that as it may, tape on your mylar or your tracing vellum as I've done right here. And then what you're going to do is extend your upper leg of the dart and you're gonna extend the line coming on out. Then you're going to extend the fold line of the dart coming on out. And you're going to extend the bottom leg of the dart coming out like this. Then every inch you are going to make a new dart. 
So the original template ends at the letter E, so then we go F, G, H, I, J on the top and on the bottom, and then in the center for the fold line, you can see that the dart extension gets much longer. So the directions tell you to come out about two and a half inches to start making that longer extension for the dart. You'll see why when I go on uh, to showing you how to perfect the dart, why this longer extension is really important. So then what we're going to do is take whatever bra cup shape you are, use that, and draw our dart. And I'll actually be doing this for you. But let's think about the um, impact that this is going to have on your pattern and why it is so important to get yourself in the correct bra cup size. So right now, we're going to talk about a couple of measurements. And we're going to put up an example on, on the video screen there for you that if we were to measure from point A to B, and that would be like the hollow in your neck down to your waistline, that would be, and that would be like in between your breasts, not over top of your bust line. You're going to get whatever that distance is, okay? Then you move the tape measure over, and now you measure over top of your bust line. Well, obviously, to get from C over your bust line down to D, that's going to be a much longer distance because the bigger the bust is, the longer and more distance that tape measure needs to go to get over top of your bust line. And so the woman, a customer who suggested this particular um, topic for me for the live chat, she actually very generously sent in the photograph of a side view of her bust. And you can see that she is very, very full busted. So the distance from her center of her neck between her breasts to her waist is much shorter than it is when she takes a side measurement over top of the bust line. And you say to yourself, why is that important? Well, it's important because it's going to help us judge the width of the dart that we put in. I am small busted. I'm gonna put in a very narrow dart compared to this customer who is very full busted, who needs a much wider dart to take that fabric up and help shape that flat fabric to the uh, configuration of the body. Now, this uh, customer actually also sent me in her measurements. She was very happy to do this to allow me to use them today. And so her bust measurement is 40 inches around, her waist, is 33 inches. Her shoulder is very short. She was four and a quarter. Her shoulder to apex is 11 inches long and her shoulder to waist is 18 inches long. And then she says, and yep, I'm a G cup dart. So we are going to show you what patterns will look like with a smaller dart versus a larger dart and what actually happens to the side seam and why that's important. Let me see, I need my trusty pin cushion on my wrist here. And what we're going to do first of all is bring up a vellum that I have prepared. And I've done this one, I've drawn it in blue because the next one's going to be in a different color. So I really want you to see the difference. Now, this is my customer's measurements. So again, let's remember she was 40 in the bus, so I'm using the 40 dot here, 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 and here. I'm also going to use the 40 at the top leg of the dart. Then her waist was 33. She was 11 inches from shoulder to apex, and then 18 inches shoulder over the bust down to the waist, and you can see the short shoulder. Now, first of all, what I'm going to do is draw in a sample or an example using a C cup dart. So I'm just going to use my original template, the adjust a bus template. And as I look at it, I'm going to go A, B, C. There's my C cup hole 
to start the dart formation. So I'm going to take that hole and I'm going to put it over top. There's the 40 dot right there. And there's C here. And then I'm going to take the fold line on the dart template and I'm going to use that upper point as a pivot point and I'm going to pivot the fold line towards the apex. Then I'll mark in the side legs of the dart. Now, you never ever want your dart to sew all the way up to your apex because that wouldn't look very flattering. So there's a series of holes at the end of the template that are marked approximately a half an inch apart and you just simply mark back your inch to an inch and a half establishing your actual dart sewing tip. Then you're going to draw in the top leg of the dart. You can draw the fold line in if you want to, I usually don't. Um, and the bottom leg of the dart. And then we'll connect the side edges together. Whoops, my stylus slipped there. And you know, actually I'm glad my stylus slipped because that reminds me that even though I'm doing this on the wall, you all want to be doing this on a flat surface because you will have a lot less problem and you won't have your tools and everything slipping around like I just did. Then you're also going to connect the bottom leg of the dart to the waist dot. And there I've put in a C cup dart. I'll just write that on here. She is a C. Now, I also want to figure out what is what is her side seam length? Because when I sew the back bodice together, I need those seams to be the same length. So I need to measure from the underarm point to the top leg of the dart, and that distance is two and a half inches. Then pretend like you're sewing that dart out and take your two and a half and put it at the bottom leg of the dart and then measure down to the waistline. And that distance on a C-cup uh, shape pattern is eight inches long. So now I'm going to do for you a G-cup dart. So for all of you full busted women, this is kind of the process that you're going to go through. Or when I say full busted, those of you who are beyond E. Because if you're up to an E-cup shape, you can still use this template just exactly like I showed you with the C. So this one is going to be the G cup example. And you notice I've drawn it in red and everything is going to be identical. Let me line that up as best as I can here. Everything is going to be identical with the exception of the G cup dart that I'm going to put in here. So again, we have the 40 dots here, 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 and we will be putting the 40 dot in at the side seam. Short shoulder, and then shoulder to apex is 11. Shoulder over apex down to the waist is 18. Okay, so now I need to take this template, and I need to find my G cup dart right there. I'm going to take this, I need to mark in that 40 dot, which is right there. I need to take the G, and I'm going to place that over top of the bus grading series of dots. Then my fold line, same thing as the other one, needs to, see I'm just pivoting here. I'm going to pivot that fold line right through the apex. Then I'm going to mark off the side leg of the dart there, and the side leg of the dart. Oops, let me get the tip of that in there and I'll do this in red so that it's standing out. Now, you take a look at the tip of the dart and you go, oh my goodness, Glenda, I can't draw the tip of my dart because look at the template. It's shot well beyond the apex. That's not a problem. That happens many, many times with you full busted ladies. Just look at where your apex is, and then from there, measure back about an inch to an inch and a half. I happen to have a little hole here, and I'm just going to make a dot through there. But if you don't have a hole in the template, all you'll need to do is 
remove the template, draw on the fold line, and then just with your measuring tape, measure back your inch to an inch and a half to establish your dart tip. So now I've got, that one didn't come out very dark there. There we go. So now I've got one, two, three, four dots there. Now I'm going to start joining these dots together. I'll use the designing stylus to do this. And the first line that I'm going to sew together is, I didn't mean sew, I mean draw, is I'm going to connect the underarm to the extension on that dart right there. And the reason I didn't come straight down like I did in the C-cup dart is because that would have made a really wonky kind of dog leg on the side of the dart. So it's better to do the process that I'm showing you right here. And then you actually then go ahead and you can draw the top leg of the dart like that. But then I want to measure from my original side seam dot here to where that line is. And that distance is 3 quarters of an inch. So then I'm going to come out on this one. Let me just get this started. And I have to make sure that this comes out 3 quarters of an inch as well. And it does. So then I can connect this. And it's all because we need to perfect this dart. I didn't want, as I said, that funny looking dog leg happening there. Now, don't worry about what I've said and remembering what I've said there because on page two of this brochure that you can download, the enlarging the template, it describes that process in detail right here up at the top of the, of the um, article. Okay. So now I have to just continue here from the bottom leg of the dart to the waistline. So now you can likely see through there, I've put in a much wider dart and that actually is a G cup dart. And now you can see what's happened to the side seam. It has gotten a lot shorter and let me show you by how much. We're going to measure from the underarm point to the top leg of the dart. Again, that's two and a half inches. I'll take that down to the bottom leg of the dart and measure, and that is measuring to the waistline, and that is five and three quarter inches long. If you remember back to our C cup dart, the side seam was eight inches long. But because I've got a much fuller bust, that means I need to take up more dart volume in order to shape the fabric towards her bust line. It means that your side seam's going to shorten automatically. And as I alluded to that when I started off, the reason, and it's so important that you understand this, is because your side seam gets shorter when you have a very full bust. And that's because when you sew the back of your garment, back bodice, to the front bodice, you want your side seams to be of identical length. Again, I will get emails from customers saying, my side seams don't match. Or I'll see that comment in one of our Facebook posts. And it's because you haven't measured your side seam minus your dart accurately. Because if you have done this process accurately, your backside seam will be the exact perfect length to sew into the side here. So now that we've taken a look at side seams and putting in that G cup dart, now what I need to show you how to do is call perfecting or truing the dart. So pardon me while my back is to the camera a bit here, but I need to unpin these, put them over on my table, my accessory table here, and I'm going to sit back down at the uh, demonstration area here, and I'm going to show you how to perfect this dart. And let me remove my papers here so that you can see this. I've got um, too much, uh, too many things going on here. Okay. 
So let me just put that there. And this is going to go over here. All righty. And I'll move that pad out just a minute. Where am I going to put this? My mouse. All righty. So now we've got our C cup dart here. And we are going to start perfecting it. Initially, this is a pattern without seam allowances. Again, I left the seam allowances off so that you would get a nice, clear vision of everything that was going on. So in order to perfect the dart, we need to do a couple things on here. First of all, we are going to make sure that you understand the difference between this point being, this is your dart tip. Sorry, I'm writing upside down there, but you'll get it. That crisscross is your apex, okay? Now, to perfect the dart, in the Surefit Designs Learning Center, we actually have two videos on perfecting the dart. Today, I'm going to uh, show you a slightly different process for perfecting the dart. It all works. This just works um, well in this particular circumstance. So I need to fold my dart in position. So the bottom leg of the dart is going to get folded up to the top leg of the dart. And then to do that, what I'm going to do is take my tracing vellum and I'm just going to flip it here real quickly so that I can make that fold line. Okay, and I'm doing it up to the tip of the dart. So the reason that I'm doing this, I should say, is because you need to get the correct cutting line or shape on the side seam. Now, one other thing I want to mention, on page eight in your dress kit instruction book, up at the right-hand corner on the um, page, what did I say it was, eight? Yep, there's a paragraph called Perfecting the Dark Cutting Line tells you why it's important to do that. And again, there are two videos in the Learning Center to help you out. I'm just showing you a slightly different technique here. Then, so we folded the bottom leg of the dart. Then, I need to make a vertical fold. Like this, through the tip of the dart. So, I'm just going to the tip of the dart and I'm going to make a vertical fold in the vellum. Okay, oops, I didn't want to unfold that. I need to go this way. Okay, so now you're looking at the dart. You've made two folds. You folded the bottom leg of the dart and you've put a vertical fold on the tip of the dart right here. Now, take the bottom leg of the dart and put your finger on the apex, uh, not the apex, sorry, your dart stitching tip, and you're going to fold the bottom leg of the dart up. And notice that I just left the tracing vellum kind of flop up like that. Now you need to take some of your removable tape and tape this down. Then you need to take your designing stylus and you're going to connect the underarm point with the waist point, like this. Then you're going to add in the seam allowance. You definitely want the seam allowance now. Whoops. Like this. And I need twice as much space here for all my demo things. OK, so now what you need to do is cut this. And let me get my scissors going here. Paper scissors, or you can use a rotary cutter if you want to. And with the dart in its folded position, you cut along your cutting line, your seam allowance line. Let me just remove the rest of that tracing vellum. All right, so now it looks like this. I'll bring it back into the view of the camera. Now, you remove your removable tape. You can see how really important this removable tape is. Then as you release that, I'll unfold this 
and it gives you the exact shape of the, of the um, dark cutting line, okay? So that is how to perfect the dark cutting line. Now I'm going to do it one more time on the G cup. So let me bring this one over and Okay, so the, I'm going to do this in blue now so that you can see the difference. This, again, is the dart tip. Dart tip means that's where you're going to sew to, up to. This is the apex. All right. We want the dart volume going down, so it means I'm going to fold on the lower leg of the dart like this, and again, to do a nice crisp fold, I just flop it over and smooth it out. Then, I need to do one more vertical fold, and I need to do it right at the tip of the dart. Okay? Now, with my finger on the dart tip, I'm going to take that bottom leg of the dart and I'm going to just let the there we go come on tracing go on here I'm just gonna let this flop up keep your finger on this dart tip and then just pivot there we go I think I've got it now okay and I'll crease that I'll put on a piece of removable tape and then I need to take my designing stylus, which has now gotten buried here. And now we're going to connect together the underarm to the waist dot, like that. Add the 5 8 inch seam allowance using that slot on the designing stylus. And then let me take that away. Oops, there it is. All right, then I'm going to cut on the seam allowance line, and we'll cut the rest of this off. And I'm going to need a little piece of that afterwards, so let me just cut that. Okay. And now remove the removable tape like this. Open it up and look at the difference that the cutting line made. It's really, really extended out. And you can see that we've not only perfected the dart properly, but we did not need to do an FBA, did we? Remember, FBA means full bust adjustment, adjustment where you cut down, you slash, and you remove this whole piece away, you add length, you add width, and you get your pattern all cut up in a million pieces. And you have to do it every single commercial pattern. Tell me, what bra cup size do most commercial patterns have in them? What bra cup size do most commercial patterns have in them? I know not all of them do anymore. There's a lot of variation coming in. Is anybody putting in an answer here for me? I've got to do what, David? Give it a little bit more time to the Okay. Size. Okay. What does what's the most common size of bust dart that's put in a commercial pattern? Aha. Sue M answered B. Terry Sprout. B. You got it. So any of you who are answering a B cup dart, you are right. Can you see how you just simply did not need to slash and spread, cut your pattern all open? Every single time. It couldn't be any easier with SureFit Designs. In fact, I had many years ago, I had a customer in the UK whose daughter was a J-cup bra shape. You can just imagine that this 16-year-old girl had very, very full breasts. Her mother emailed back to me after she'd made a top for her daughter. And she said, Glenda, this is absolutely amazing. She used a one inch wide 
gingham checked fabric. She said, it is the first time ever that my daughter has ever had a hemline that's hung straight. You can see the checks running straight one to the other because we put her in that big bra cup size. Now, I do appreciate that you've got a lot of dart volume here that's gonna to need to be dealt with in your side seam. So at the end of this lesson today, and after I've done the Q&A with all of you, we are gonna run a video for you that I really encourage you all to stay around and watch, and it's called Dividing the Dart, so that you don't have to have all of the fullness in your dart in one place. It can go in many other locations. So please stay at the end of the, the chat today. So now I've taught you importance of perfecting the dart, the different kinds of cup sizes that you no longer need to do in FBA. You've got your dart in the side seam of your bodice. And then let's design with it so you don't have to have it always in the side seam. So we're going to go back up to the wall here and we're going to take a look at this um, bodice template that I have up here. And we're going to start moving the dart around, okay? So first of all, you're going to see a big circle right here. This is called your bust circle. And your dart tip can basically end, whoops, <laughs> I didn't want that to fall out right yet. <laughs> Let me put another pin right here. Okay, so your bust dart tip can end pretty much anywhere within that circle. But when you are sewing a dart out, you typically want to end your dart tip back about an inch to an inch and a half from the apex. Now, I'm going to ask you two more questions. And the first question is, what does a dressmaker's dart mean? What's the definition of a dressmaker's dart? And question number two is, what's the definition of the designer's dart? Okay? Now, I know it's going to take you a few seconds to write your questions in uh, the chat window. And while you're doing that, um, one of the things that I asked you to do when you were in, um, when you were reading the announcements about this chat, is to read page 24 and 25 of your dress kit instruction book. And the reason I asked you to read that is because there it's going to show you and talk about the designer's start versus the dressmaker's start. All right, at this point, because I'm standing, I can't get back over to the laptop to see your answers. But if anybody answered that the dressmaker's start is the one you sew out for good fit on your body, you are absolutely correct. That's this green dart right here. And the designer's dart is the dart that gets drawn right up to the tip of the apex. That is the dart that you cut out to help us move it around in order to move the dart to a different position. Now I'm going to give you a formula that is very, very simple for helping you to remember how to move the dart around. I call it the three C's. It is cut, cut, close. Okay? Cut, cut, close. Let me show you what I mean by that. We're going to go up to this bodice front, and the first thing that I would do is cut the designer's dart up to the apex, and you're going to cut it and totally <laughs> remove it. I didn't mean to throw it on the floor, but I don't need it any longer, so we'll just leave it on the floor for right now. Okay, so that's cut number one. Cut number two is where you want the dart to go. So for this example, I'm going to cut in the shoulder, in the armhole right here, and then the third thing that you do is close. All right, so I'm going to repeat that. Cut, cut, and close. So if you can remember those three C's, it's going to help you out a lot when you're learning to move the dart around. So this dart now is in the 
armhole area. And I would like to show you a garment that has that had that happen. This pretty little bolero, there's the dart coming out of the armhole pointing to the apex. Let's do another example. So cut, cut, close. My first cut is to remove the designer's dart. Now I'm going to cut again on the shoulder line and I am going to close. So cut, cut, close. And now I've opened up the dart in the shoulder line. As we go over here to this bodice that's on the mannequin, you're going to see, even though it's a really highly patterned fabric, you're going to see the dart coming out of the shoulder line and going up to the apex. And this is a knit fabric, so I can already hear some of you saying, well, Glenda, if it's a knit fabric, why do I need to have a dart? Knit stretch to our body. Well, they do. Some of them do. Some knits have way more stretch than others. The least amount of stretch it has, the more it's going to need a dart. But even with very, very stretchy fabrics, when you are a very full busted woman, if you don't put a dart in, I can assure you, you are going to have a fold or a drag line coming from somewhere. I think it was one of the very first chats that I did. It was called um, The Beloved T-Shirt, where I showed you how to take the dart out of the bodice front and do a dartless T-Shirt. And my caution there was that if you are a very full busted woman, you're still going to need a dart. So just be aware of that. Darts provide so much excellent shaping for our body. As we take a look at the um, graphic that's on the wall here, you're also going to see the dart coming out of the shoulder line. Here, it's only stitched part way down, and then we did a release plate. And then you'll notice this pretty little neckline that I put on here. I've called that an S style of neckline, and that's also what I've put on the blouse that I'm wearing today. And where you'll find the directions for this neckline are in the dress kit instruction book on page 54. Now, the blouse that I'm wearing does come from the um, dart DVD. It's this one right here. The darts, versatile and amazing. Now, this DVD, as I said, has four different dart positions in it. And the blouse that I'm wearing shows you one of them. I've actually taken the bust dart and I made three cuts in the shoulder line and let those open up. There's a little extra step that you need to do in there and that's why this is so important. Then there are three other dart positions on here. Now these dart positions are very different from what I show you in the dress kit instruction book. And you might look at this and say, well, Glenda, well, I like that one and I like that one, but I don't think I'd ever wear this one. You know what? Once I've shown you how to move your darts around, make a number of copies of your um, half size scale bodice because you can do all of these practice e examples on the half scale bodice, gain your confidence, and then you too are going to realize why we called this darts versatile and amazing because they really, really are versatile and they can do some amazing things for different designs in our, in our garments. One thing before I forget this, you'll notice that in our DVD cases, there is a little white tag that on the inside, when you open it up, it takes you to the Academy and gives you the discount code so that you can watch all of the DVDs in a streaming video format. I did mean to say that earlier and it completely slipped my mind. So I'll just interject it there. Okay, so now again, garments that have a shoulder dart in them. This shawl collar jacket is an example where here the dart has been sewn all the way down just like in that uh, floral tank top. So um, they can look very, very different depending on your fabric, depending on whether you sew them halfway down or all the way down or put them into a release pleat or maybe you gather them. So um, let's go back to our template over here and I want to do another one. So remember the formula, the three C's, cut. Cut where you want the next dart to go, so that's the second C, and close is the third C. So now I've just opened up that dart in the neckline area. 
Let's take a look at a couple of examples here. This is my little blue dress. It was the dress that I sewed as the example in our design and sew along, the little black dress. I couldn't sew in black because black doesn't photograph well, so I sewed it in this beautiful royal blue. And here you can see two darts coming right out of the neckline. And of course, I've put that pretty little flounce on the bottom. You don't need to put a flounce on if you don't want to. My black one is just a plain straight hem. Where you're going to find our design and sew alongs is in the SureFit Academy, and you will see our, our little black dress design and sew along there. Now, here is another example of where the dart's been taken into the neckline. But what I did first of all was I scooped the neckline and then I took the bust dart and I cut three times into the neckline and then in that space I gathered that area rather than sewing it as a dart. This is one of our digital fashion leaflets. All of us distributors carry them. You just need to go to our websites, to the shop tab, and go down to digital sewing patterns and you will see this uh, gathered front uh, tank top. We can also take the dart and put it down into the lower side seam and I have an example that I've done here and sorry this garment is in black it's the only one that I've got where I've sewn the dart coming out of the lower side seam but there you can see it's been moved from here down to there pointing up to the apex. This um, digital sewing pattern came as a result of a customer emailing me and asking me if I had any instructions for a tunic. And I said, well, no, at that point in time I didn't. Um, send me some ideas of the tunic that you'd like to have. So she sent me to a ready-to-wear website. This particular tunic that I copied was $325. And from there, the tunics went on up in price, needless to say. We can sew it for a lot less expensively and ensure that your pattern is going to fit you because your basic body pattern is your blueprint. Okay, I'm going to ask you another question. When we take a look at these two garments, they're both cowl neck garments. Tell me, where did the bust dart go? Where did the bust dart go in these cowl neck garments? In this gold one, you have a, a drop that is much lower than you do in this black and white one. This is a, a, a much higher drop on the cowl. This one is actually a design that is in our designing book called Beyond Bodice Basics. And remember I told you that this has the DVD in it showing you how to do all of the drawing steps for all of the patterns that are included in there. And this particular black and white one, same similar process to make the cowl neck, but this is actually a digital fashion leaflet, and it's called the high neck cowl found in our digital sewing patterns. Okay, so again, I can't jump over to the laptop right now to see your answers about where the bust dart went, but if you answered it went into center front, you are absolutely correct, okay? So now you know how to move it around, or let's say you know the three C's, you've seen me do it, now it's your turn. You're going to participate with me, and we are going to do these exercises together. So I would like you to take your bodice front half scale pattern that you downloaded, and we're all going to start together here and start drawing on it. So I won't go too fast, and I will repeat myself. So remember that this crisscross is your apex. This point right here is the dart tip. This black dart that's already on the pattern, that is called the dressmaker's dart, and now Please take a ruler or your line drafter, and we're going to draw the designer's dart. So that starts at the beginning of the dart and goes up 
to the crisscross of the apex. And you know, I think I went crooked there because I wasn't leaning over far enough to really see this well. That's better. Okay, I'll put my pencil point on the apex and then I'll get started correctly. I need to draw the other leg of this and it's going to go to the where the dart starts at the top. So those red lines that I've drawn are called the designer's dart. Now, we need to decide where we're going to put the dart. You can put it in any of those positions that I showed you. The process will be the same. But for this group exercise, let's all put it into the shoulder line so that you're following along with me. So now we need to basically just eyeball the shoulder line and divide it in half. And I'm using my erasable colored pencils here. I drew this in blue so that you can distinctively see the difference. We are going to put the dart into the shoulder line. Now, because I'm going to be cutting into the um, apex, take a piece of your removable tape. This, by the way, everybody, is absolutely indispensable for all of this pattern work. Now, remember my three Cs, cut, cut, close. So we need to cut out the designer's dart, then we need to cut where we want that pattern or where we want the dart to go, and then we're going to close the designer's dart. So you can use your paper scissors or a rotary cutter to do this. And I've just cut on the bottom leg of the dart, the top leg of the dart, and I do need to remove that uh, designer's dart out. Then that's cut number one. Cut number two is where I want the dart to go. So I'm cutting down through the shoulder line. I'm cutting up to the apex, but not through. We try to maintain a little hinge there, but if it falls apart, don't worry about it. Just put a little more tape on. And if you haven't cut quite enough, just use your little nippers and uh, cut into the apex. So that was cut, cut, and close. Okay, so I'm going to say that one more time. Draw the designer's dart all the way up to the apex. Then cut where you want the dart to go. Then close the side fitting dart. Alrighty, now I'm going to take a piece of tape, paste my removable tape, and I'm going to tape that closed on the side. Now, this isn't our finished dart because, again, we don't want the dart stitching right up to the apex. So I'm just going to use a piece of vellum here. And let's see here. You need to place that behind the opening. And you definitely want to tape this down well. You don't want any loose edges. Let me start up like that. And like this. And then I need one more piece of tape down here. Okay, I need to put a little piece of tape on the back too so this doesn't get floppy on me. Right there. And right there. All right, so let's turn it right back around. So now I've got my vellum taped behind. Now, we don't want to stitch the dart right up to the apex because that, again, wouldn't look flattering in the finished garment. So typically, I say stop your dart tips back about an inch to an inch and a half. Because I'm working on a half scale pattern, I'm going to mark back approximately three quarters of an inch. And I'm making a dot right in between my two uh, cutting lines there. And I'm just making this in green so it stands out differently. Then I will connect up to the opening of my dart like that. Now I need to do what's called perfecting the dart. So are you all ready to catch up with me? I've drawn the actual dart that we're going to sew out like what was on that shawl collar jacket. Now, I want 
the bulk of this dart aiming towards the neckline. So my first fold is going to be on the green line, on my dart stitching line closest to center front. So I'm just going to take this and fold it. Sometimes I think folding of our paper is the, is the hardest part here. Okay, so now I've got it folded. I need to unfold very quickly there. Okay, so I creased an edge on that line. Then, at the tip of the dart, I need to make another fold. And this time, my fold is going to be uh, horizontal, like that. Then I put, oh, I got some tape here, I do. Then I put my finger on the tip of the dart, and I'm going to take that green fold line, and I'm going to place it to the other green fold line as if I was sewing that dart out. And then tape it down, okay? So you get it all folded into position. Then you want to take your designing stylus, and we're going to draw from the shoulder point to the neck point, add the seam allowance like that, and then we're going to cut this. And I'm going to do this one with a rotary cutter, so I have to flop that out. Sorry if the camera isn't picking that up very well. Let me try to turn it this way for you. Then I'm going to cut along that line being my seam allowance. I'll just cut that all off. Didn't cut quite the way through. I think I need to change the blade in this rotary cutter. Goodness sakes, I really need to change the blade. Let me get my scissors in there. Okay, that got it. There was too many layers of paper. Okay, and so from there, you just untape the removable tape and there you have the correct dart extension for that shoulder dart now, with the bulk of the dart going towards the neckline. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this exercise with me. If you did, please put some comments in the chat window, and also make sure you comment down below the uh, video today. We rarely get comments on our live videos. We get most of them in the chat, and I'd love to see some comments put into the video, into the, you know, underneath there into the uh, YouTube uh, comment window. And in fact, I'm going to ask you all to do a favor for me right now. Right underneath this video, there is a red button, and it says subscribe. I'd like you to click that button for me. I know lots of you already are subscribed to my YouTube channel, but there's lots of you who aren't. And by doing that, it helps our algorithms in YouTube. And so when people go searching for something like how to transfer a dart around, Surefit Designs will pop up. So please do us that favor and click the subscribe button. Okay, so I hope everybody was able to follow along here and that you enjoyed this experience. Now, just before we go on to the... Um, questions and answers today, I want to quickly review that we do have a DVD sale going on right now. And um, in the United States, it's 15% off. The sale is good for all distributors for Saturday and Sunday. It's over Monday, oh, Monday night, Sunday night at uh, midnight. You want to make sure you put in the coupon code DVD sale, and that way you'll get 15% off any of our DVD tutorials and also the three designing books because they have DVDs in them as well. So what I'd like to do now is go on and answer your questions. So let me remove some of this stuff and see what we have here. It'll just take me a few minutes um, to look through here. And 
Um, here's a question. What can be done for someone with a severe hunchback? Well, that is an excellent question because you can think about with a severe hunchback, you need darts to shape the curvature in the body. So we can do one of two things. We can put shoulder darts in. Also, we can split the pattern across from center back, literally opening up the pattern in center back and putting a dart wedge in the center back of the pattern. And then the more you wedge the center back, the better the shape you're gonna get on the back. So you're incorporating that dart shape into the actual pattern. It does mean that you're going to need a center back seam though. But that, I, again, it certainly can be done. And um, uh, that is the process. In fact, there's a video. I've done a video on splitting the back. I can't remember the exact name of it. Maybe that's what I called it, uh, an alternative way for a rounded back or something like that. But if you go into the uh, SFD Learning Center, you will see an alternative way for the rounded back, and I show you how to split the pattern. What else have we got here? <laughs> Here's a question from, can you do a live session for contouring corsets? No, I can't. <laughs> Sorry. I don't do corsets. You might need to go to uh, YouTube to find information on that. That's just not something that I've ever gotten into. And if it's not something I know really well, there's no point in me trying to uh, recreate a wheel that somebody else has done a better job than I could do on that. So I'm sorry. No, I can't. Um, let's see. Let's, okay, so here's from Laura Car Carmichael. To clarify, after doing the second cut, the first fold is along the right line to, or excuse me, is along the line right to the apex. And the second fold is along the horizontal one, which is the dressmaker's dot. The first fold. Well, Let's make sure that we're talking about the same thing here. Are you talking about the line that needs to go, the fold that needs to go into place for uh, perfecting the dart? Or are you talking about my cut, cut, close formula? So let me, where did I put my little bodice here? Let's see if we can clarify this. After doing the second cut, the second cut being where we want the dart to go, Um, to the apex, the second fold and the second fold. I'm sorry, Laura, uh, your question is a little confusing to me. So I'm just going to review this. Cut out the designer's dart. That's cut one. Cut two goes to the apex. Fold or close is closing up your uh, designer's dart. Then, when we start folding, it's the line, if the bulk, let's put it this way, if I wanted the bulk of this dart going towards the armhole, just the opposite of what I did, then I would fold on that side of the dart. But I don't. I wanted the bulk of the dart going towards my center front. So that's why this fold was on that side of, of my stitching line. Then, once I had that done, in order to perfect the dart at the tip of the dart, not at the apex, at the tip of the dart, I made another fold that way. So, um, come back and watch this. You know, these live chats are free. You can come back at any time. Watch them as many times as you want to. I've gone over a lot of information in here, a lot of lessons being taught today. So, I would encourage you to come back and watch this process again. You'll get it because I go slow enough. You just need to stop and start the video so that you do exactly what I do. Let's see here. Um, uh, from Janice, after I made the G-cup dart, do I still need the waist dart? Well, yes, because that waist dart doesn't have anything to do with the bodice fitting dart or the bust fitting dart. So if 
uh, let's put it this way. If you have a full tummy and you don't want your clothes tight to your tummy, then you can leave that waist-fitting dart out completely or you can sew it half width. But it's not as important as the bust, the side-fitting bust dart. So hopefully that will clarify. And it also depends on the style of garment. Many times I don't use the waist-fitting dart because I've gathered it or maybe I've turned it into a princess line or something or other. It's that bust fitting dart, the side seam one, that's real important. So that was a good question. It looks like um, Kelly put up the link to the rounded back video. Thank you, Kelly, for doing that. Um, okay, here's a question saying, please, how to, how to adjust the side seams for the G-cup bodice? I did that in the demonstration. And there's no adjusting of the side seam. It is just what you have left. Please come back and watch this video again. There is no adjusting of the side seam. Once you put your correct dart width in, your side seam is your side seam. Um, could I please share what does the beginner's DVD cover? If you're meaning um, the... Where did I put it? I guess it's in my hand right here. If you're meaning this Make It So DVD series, it covers a lot of different things. It's on sewing. Um, in lesson number one, I talk about seams and seam finishes, curve seam, princess seams, corners and points. I do invisible zipper, lap zippers, center zippers. That was actually disc two. Disc one. I do fabric sewing steps, grain line and layout, cutting and marking, estimating yardage, single darts, double-ended darts, and pleats. In disc number three, I cover how to do waistbands, the waist edge, an elastic half back, notches and notching. What's the difference between notches and notching? The woven sleeve, how to set it in, how to set in a knit sleeve, patch pockets, and on disc number four, I cover how to apply a facing, how to attach a collar, how to do hems, many different hem choices, buttonholes, sewing buttons, garment analysis, and then we give you resources. So there's lots of information in that beginning sewing series. Um, will Glenda's bodice draft working for an M cup shape? Yes, just take that big template follow the directions, download the instructions, extend the template, and go out to the letter M. Yes, it will definitely work. Here's another question. How do I adjust the back side seam to match the front side seam? Please go back and watch this video again. Whatever length you have left in your side seam after you've put your dart in is what determines how long your back side seam is. Can you show how to how a, a tuck would be made from a dart? Um, do you have to split the dart line? For a tuck that I would make from a dart I would simply, when I'm sewing this, I would sew it and, let's see here what I'm saying, I would sew it only halfway down and then I would release it and it would open up to be a tuck. That's how I do all my tucks. So the same process for the dart, stitch it about halfway down, stop stitching and the rest of the dart just hangs open, okay? Let's see what else we've got here. Um, this is a good question. What is the impact to style when moving the bust dart down to the lower side seam, as in the tunic? Does it help fit around the waist too? It can. The, having the dart coming from the lower side seam is generally very, very flattering because the visual line aims up towards the apex. And um, so 
if you've got a full bust and a low bust, you're likely best not to put a dart coming in from the armhole aiming downward because that takes the eyeball downward. Keep your darts going upward. And in fact, in the dress kit instruction book, on page 25, it shows you how to do the French dart, which actually comes out of the low hip area and then curves up towards the dart, uh, towards your apex point. That's an extremely flattering design line. And so when you put in the uh, French dart, you don't need to put in the, that waist-fitting dart. You could actually just taper in the side seams. But again, depending on how full your tummy area is and your stomach is, you might just want to leave that waist-fitting dart out. So that is really um, a very flattering design. So it's, it's a good one to choose. Um, here's a question. What is a split dart? Well, that's when you take this whole dart and put half of it here and half of it somewhere else. Armhole, side seam, neckline. And that's why I would like you to watch the video that's going to be shown at the end of this presentation. It shows you how to split the dart. And you still end up with a good shape because you keep your width um, the required for your body. You just put half in one location and half in another location. Question, is there a way to remove the dart and still have a fitted bodice? Not, not if you don't want drag lines in your bodice going up to your bust line. Not really. Um, go back and watch the, um, what did I call it? Um, the beloved t-shirt just gets better with SureFit Designs. That was a, a chat we did in January. It's in my YouTube channel. Please go back and watch it. I discussed that whole concept. Um, here's a question. How, do, how to keep the dart tips from flaring out like a match flame? That's an interesting description. Is my dart too long or too short? Well, the dart might be too long or too short, but usually when the dart tip flips up towards the outside, it's because you've actually curved on the inside when you go to that stitching tip where you stitch it right off. And you've got to be really, really careful that you're stitching really close to the fold line of the fold of the fabric and stitch in a nice, smooth, straight line. Um, that's one of the things that I show in the Make It So series is on stitching the dart tip and how to make sure that it doesn't do that little flip up. The other thing that's really important when you've stitched a dart is to put it on a tailor's hem to press it. If you're not using a tailor's hem for pressing, then you're gonna get really weird looking dart tips anyway. So that tailor's ham is one of the most valuable pressing aids that you can ever have in your sewing supply. Um, another question, can you convert the darts to a princess line which would be fitted? And the answer is yes. And that is actually what I will use for the next chat topic is princess lines and we'll go all over them. So um, I'm going to hold any further response until then. Um, to adjust, let's see, what's this one? To adjust the back side seam, do you draw straight from the original center back waistline to the new, what's that? To adjust the back side seam, do you draw straight from the original center back waistline to the new side seam waistline. I'm sorry, that question isn't making any sense to me. Um, please look at the how-to DVD or the bodice fitting course DVD as I show exactly how to do the back side seam, okay? It's also covered in this instruction book, uh, the dress kit instruction book on page um, 10. It is Page 10, number 19, it shows the mathematical for formula there. When you say adjust, it's almost, I use the word adjust because it doesn't fit properly. The back side seam isn't adjusted. It is simply made the length that your front side seam is minus the width of your dart. Okay? All right, let's go on.
Um, how do you know when the double point dart, when the double point dart down to the hip is too long or too short? Is there a way to determine if an adjustment is needed or is this just subjective? Part of it's going to depend, Laura, on where the, your fullness is. Oh, I finally understand what you're saying. One dart shorter than the other in a skirt. The dart that is closest to your center front should be the longest dart. The secondary dart towards your side seam should be the shorter dart. And then you just need to ad adapt those dart tips according to the fullness in your body. Um, another question, my dress kit instruction book is the fourth edition. Do I need to purchase a new book so I have more recent instruction? Well, it wouldn't be a bad idea. And to purchase the dress kit instruction book, you need to send me an email directly to info at surefitdesigns.com. I don't have that item on my website as a purchasable item. And so we can send you an invoice for it. And, uh, but yes, it's a good idea to keep your latest editions of the instruction books at all times because there is updated information. Um, another question here, do I assume the French dart still follows the expansion rules for the G-cup? The answer is yes to that, but you've got to make your G-cup first of all on the side seam and then you transfer it down into the low hip area. Um, okay, well, let's see. What's my time getting to be here? Um, oh, my goodness. I have talked, like, for 90 minutes. It's already 1230 here in Idaho. I didn't realize when you're having so much fun, time, fl <laughs> time flies fast, doesn't it? Oh, my goodness. Well, listen, everybody, I just have to say, Thank you so much for sticking with me. You know, sometimes I just really, when I start talking, I, I just keep going and going and going. And I love answering your questions, but there comes a point <laughs> where we have to say, that's it. So again, this is, a, we, we really want at Surefoot Designs for us to be an inspiration for you this entire year. And that's why we're doing these live chats. So. Um, keep participating. Let your sewing friends know that we're here, that we're doing these things. And please make sure to stay and watch the little video that we're going to run you at the end of this chat on splitting the dart in two. It would be really, really an important one to watch and very appropriate after all that you've learned in this dart lesson. Thanks again, everybody from all over the world. I really appreciate you getting up early, staying up late, and attending. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next chat. Hi, everyone. I'm Glenda with SureFit Designs, whimsically referred to as Glenda the Good Stitch. The essence of this video today is to show you how to take a large dart and divide it so that you are putting a portion of it in another location on the bodice. Now, a few weeks ago, a customer who has a very full bust emailed me and said, Glenda, I don't like all the volume of my dart going into the side seam. And she was a double D dart. And she said, can I take some of that dart and move it to another location? And the answer is, by all means, yes. And so then she said, well, do you have a video that shows me how to do that? And I said, well, no, I don't. So after today, we will have a video that's going to show you how to take this dart and divide it up, and we're going to put a portion of it in another location. In the case of this particular customer, she wanted her bust dart split in between her side seam and her armhole. So that's what I'm going to start off showing you to do. I've drawn off just a basic bodice and I've put in a double D dart. So when you take a look at the adjust a bust template, here is the double D right here. And if I line that up, 
on the position where I've drawn it, you can see that that's the width of the double D. You might be a D, a double D, an E, or even larger. The larger you become in your bust, the wider this dart, which means the more fabric that is going to have to go down and be incorporated into that side seam. So this really is an excellent option for you to take it and divide it up. So let's see how to do that. We'll start with this dart, and one of the things that you need to know is approximately how wide is this dart? How wide is your dart? And this one is about three inches wide. So that's just information that we're going to use when we start maneuvering the dart and moving it around. Now the first thing that I need to do is draw what is called the designer's dart. And so I'm going to do this in green and what you're going to be doing is drawing long lines going from the beginning of the dart up to wherever your apex position is on your body or on your pattern. So I'm just using my line drafter. It's so handy to use this with this attached handle. It just makes maneuverability really easy. So this green dart is called the designer's dart. I'm going to be cutting that out. But before I do, I'm going to decide where would I like half of this dart to go. It could go into the armhole, into the shoulder line, the neckline, center front, or it could go into the waistline dart as well. I'm going to take half of this into the arm side. And where do you know to draw this line? Well, you can see where the position is for the uh, single notch indicating the front armhole area. I've come up about an inch from that. Keep in mind the higher up you take this, again, it, it's going to create a nice visual line going up on your body. You just, I don't think you'd want to take it lower than your arm side notch because that's just a little bit too low. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is just take a little piece of tape and cover the apex up because that apex needs to become a pivotal point. And the first thing that I'm going to do is cut on those green designer dart lines and I'm going to cut all the way through the side seam. Now, the other thing I should mention is that You'll notice that I only have the one exterior line on this pattern. It means it doesn't have the seam allowance on it yet. So that, of course, is something that you'll want to do at the very end is add your seam allowances. I just didn't put them on because I didn't want a lot of confusing visual lines on this demonstration. So there's the regular dart. It's the designer's dart and I'll just cut it out and leave it right there. Now I'm going to cut open on the dart line that I drew going into the armhole and I'm going to cut all the way through the, the cutting line and seam line. Now basically what you want to do is take this width of dart and divide it in half. Close half of it up and put the other half in the opening in the armhole. So it will basically look like this, and you can see that my apex is the pivotal point. Now you need to put a piece of tracing vellum behind here to back these openings. So I've just got a leftover piece of tracing vellum, and you know I've told you many times not to throw out your leftover tracing vellum because you never know when it's going to come in handy for you to do something exactly what I'm doing right now. So I back the opening with tracing vellum and I'm just going to measure here that it's approximately that's an inch and a half and that is about an inch and a half as well. I'll take another little piece of removable tape and I'm just going to tape at the apex position. Now you want to tape this down really well. So let me start right here and tape that down and tape this side down. 
a little bit more space right there. And, oops, I'm not getting that. And I'll straddle this dart if I can. Here. Oh, see, with this removable tape, it's just so easy to lift it up and reposition it without ripping the vellum. I know you're going to absolutely love this tape. And, of course, we do carry it at surefitdesigns.com. All right. So now those two darts are taped in position. So now I've taken half the dart and put it up into the armhole area. Now, you've likely heard me say many times, you never want to stitch your dart up to the tip of your apex. It just wouldn't look very flattering to have a dart stitched all the way there, particularly when you've got two darts coming into the same point. So now what you're going to do is measure back about an inch to an inch and a half. I'm actually going to do this one at an inch and a quarter. And you can see that I am putting that mark right in between the designer dart lines right there. And I'm going to do the same thing on that dart right there. And now I will take the line drafter and I'll make new dart stitching lines going up to my new dart stitching tip. So there's one of the darts and that of course is the dart that's in the side seam and here is the other dart again drawn in red so that you can really see it and that now is in the armhole position. Now the next thing that you want to do is called perfecting the dart and this is actually easier done when you've got a 90 degree angle corner on your table. I don't have that right now, um, so I'm just going to do this the best way I can. We're going to take the bottom leg of this dart and I'm just going to make a gentle crease right here and I'm going to fold this in position. See what I'm doing here is I'm taking a one-dimensional form being the flat pattern and I'm turning it into a three-dimensional form and if you can hang this point over top of a 90 degree angle corner of a table that just lets the volume of the paper lay down flat and I actually have a video on doing this perfecting the dart um, that's a lot I won't say clearer than this one but it's focused directly on the perfecting the dart and I do have a 90 degree angle corner there that I use to make it all happen properly and at the end of this video I'll do my best to give you a link to that dart uh, to that dart to that video on perfecting the dart so now I've created this three-dimensional form and you want to then do a straight line coming down and I'll do this in red like that and we also need the 5 8 inch seam allowance on here so I'll just take the designing stylus and add on my 5 8 inch seam allowance and you'll see why when I cut on this I need that seam allowance there because it's going to give me the exact cutting line so then I will take this rotary cutter I'm just going to cut all the way up like that and remove this section and then I can remove the removable tape and when I unfold this that does the perfecting of excuse me dropping the rotary cutter there that does the perfecting of the dark cutting line. So you can see that's my 5 8 inch seam allowance. I would cut all the way down here and I'll um, follow that cut line. And then when your dart is sewn into position, it gives you the correct dart extension on the side of the dart. You would do exactly the same thing for the dart in the armhole area, is fold it into position with the bulk of the dart going downward and then uh, perfect the line, perfect the cutting line. So as I said, you can put this secondary dart or half of your original dart 
into any position that you'd like to on the bodice. Now, the customer who requested this was kind enough to send me photographs of her finished garments. And so I'm just going to show you this. This white top here actually has two darts in it, the side seam dart and the armhole dart. And you can see that she is a fairly full busted lady. Now, she did this process that I've just shown you, and there is a view of the side seam, so you can, or the side of her body, so you can see the bust fitting dart out of the side seam is right there, and the dart coming out of the armhole is right there. Now, yes, that is fairly obvious in a solid color fabric, but she also did this in a print. And so you can see that in the print, you can hardly see any dart structure at all. So don't worry about your dart being obvious or the fact that you've now got two darts in your bodice. If you need the two darts, use them and, and be comfortable with it. And depending on your fabric, you may never see that. Now, another thing that you can do with your dart structure is as I've done on this garment here, this is called the high low hem swing top. And you can see how full it is at the hemline. So what I've done, I don't know if I can move this for you here. What I've done is I've taken that bust fitting dart right here. I've closed it up and I've put the whole dart going down into the waistline. And where you're going to see the directions for that are on page 38 and 39 of the dress kit instruction book and it's called the high low hem swing top and you might be able to see this here where I have taken the bust fitting dart I've closed it and I've opened it up in the hemline plus I've added a little extra flaring on the bottom well again from a customer she said she had a large bust she took the whole dart and put it down in the hem, hemline, and now she didn't like how full it was at the hemline. So a great alternative is to do something like I've shown you here. Take the dart, leave half of it in the side seam, and then put the other half of it down into the hemline so it doesn't make the hem quite so full. So always remember with Surefit Designs, you do have a lot of choices on how you can design with your pattern. So um, what else did I want to tell you? I think that's about it for this particular lesson, but I would encourage you to make sure that you join our Surefit Designs community, particularly if you haven't joined us already. And you can do that in three very easy steps. Number one is make sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is just Surefit Designs. And the reason is because when I add new videos, you'll be able to be informed of them and watch them and see if there's something that's a benefit to you. Uh, secondly, we do have an excellent Facebook group. If you happen to be a Facebook member, um, you're going to be requesting, you go to our Surefit Designs, no, you don't do that at all. You go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Surefit Designs and there you will see to request to join our private group. Please make sure you answer all three questions um, in order to be approved. And then the third way to be a part of the Surefit Designs community is to participate in our newsletter and receive our newsletter. So there you will go to surefitdesigns.com and on any page that you land on, there will be one of those little pop-ups come up and you can just enter your name and email address and there are four free gifts to get you started. So with that, I would like to say thank you so much for watching and I do hope that I'll see you in our next video.